Gabby Petito never goes outside. <laughs> July 2nd, 2020. Exactly one year before a life-changing road trip would begin, Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry announced their engagement online. On Instagram, a picture of their first date. Gabby writing, Brian asked me to marry him, and I said yes. One day later, Brian posting, till death do us part. I'm so happy the answer was yes. Then there was the van. The 22-year-old and 23-year-old purchasing a vehicle to take them across country, a white 2012 Ford Transit van. New van means new adventures. And it would all begin on July 2nd, 2021, from the hamlet of Blue Point in Suffolk County on Long Island, where Gabby and Brian were visiting her parents, celebrating her brother's high school graduation. July 4th, on the road in their new home, outfitted for camping and cooking, the couple snapped photos at Monument Rocks in Scott City, Kansas. Then to Colorado. Two nights at the campsites at the Great Sand Dunes National Park and Reserve with sand surfing. Next up, Utah. After leaving Colorado and getting stuck in a dust storm, the couple spent three nights in Zion National Park, hiking and pitching a picture-perfect campsite. From Zion to Cedar Breaks National Monument to Bryce Canyon National Park. The couple taking pictures and videos near the edge of the cliffs. I love the van. A few days later, Gabby posting photos from Mystic Hot Springs then hiking barefoot through Canyonlands National Park. After that, 12 days go by with no posts. Thursday, August 12th, Gabby posts photos from a trip just days before, a hike around the delicate arch at Arches National Park. Gabby noting she waited in a short line for someone to take their photo. Later, camping in Devil's Garden. But August 12th, things would take a turn. Currently doing 45 miles an hour, Zone through here is 25. Oh! Subject says to hit the curb. Officers called to reports of a disorderly conduct encountered Gabby and Brian in Moab City, Utah. What's your guys' names? Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. Brian tells police Gabby got frustrated because she was trying to start a blog. She had been working on it for hours. He says they got into a fight when he got in the van with dirty feet. She just I worked up because we were trying to get going and get our day going because we want to go um, hike arches before the summer of the Gabby explains to officers she has anxiety and OCD. Some days I have really bad OCD. Brian is determined to be the victim and pleads with officers to not press charges. I'm fine and I love Gabby. I, I hope she doesn't have too many complaints about me. <laughs> Police ask the two to separate for the night. They take Brian to a hotel and give Gabby the keys to the van. The next day, Brian posts photos tagged in Arches National Park and then in Moab. A week after the altercation, Gabby posts, but it's unclear where the couple is in terms of location. She also posts her first and only YouTube video for her blog. It appears to chronicle the couple's relationship and travels. On August 25th, Gabby posts her last Instagram post, writing, Happy Halloween, posing with a pumpkin in front of a mural outside The Monarch, a venue in Ogden, Utah, north of Salt Lake City. And then there's this. Jen Bethune says this video was taken in Teton County on 27th August, around 6 p.m., and it shows a van that looks identical to Gabby's, but police have not confirmed it is hers. Two days later, on the 29th of August. My boyfriend and I picked up Brian. A woman claims to pick up a hitchhiker from Coulter Bay Village, south of Grand Teton. He approached us asking us for a ride because he needed to go to Jackson, which we were going to Jackson that night. This happened about 5.30 p.m. After seeing social media videos, she now identifies that person as Brian. I'm hoping this can help someone identify him. On August 30th, Gabby's mother receives a text from her daughter, but believes she didn't send it. I just believe she's in danger because I, she's not in touch with us and she could be alone somewhere. She could be stranded somewhere in the wilderness. 
and she needs help. Two days and more than 2,300 miles later, on September 1st, police say Brian arrives in Northport, Florida with the van, but without Gabby. She's reported missing by her parents on Long Island on September 11th. That same day, the van is processed for evidence at the home the two shared with Brian's parents. Brian does not talk to the police or to the FBI. Then on September 15th, Brian is named a person of interest in the case. The police chief of Northport pleading with the Laundry family to speak to them. At the time, they do not realize it, but Brian is not at home. The next day, two people went on a trip, one person returned, and that person that returned isn't providing us any information. Police and Gabby's family begging for the Laundry family to speak up. We beg you to tell us, as a parent, how could you let us go through this pain? The Petito family even pens a heartfelt letter to Brian's parents. As a parent, how could you put Gabby's younger brothers and sisters through this? That evening, Brian's sister speaking exclusively with Good Morning America. Obviously, me and my family want Gabby to be found safe. She's like a sister and my children love her. And all I want is for her to come home safe and sound and this to be just a big misunderstanding. Then on Friday, September 17th, the Laundries call police to report Brian is missing. They claim they last saw him Tuesday the 14th. He said he was going to the county park. The family attorney says they searched for him there on Wednesday, then drove his Ford Mustang back to their home on Thursday morning. However, Eyewitness News has confirmed Laundry's car was back in the driveway on Wednesday. On Saturday, there were dual searches for two missing persons. Authorities scour the massive 25,000 acre county park known as the Carlton Reserve, north of the Laundry family home in Florida, to no avail all weekend. Across the country, the FBI, the National Park Service, and local law enforcement agencies search the mountainous terrain of Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming, search it for clues about what may have happened to Gabby. Then on Sunday, the heartbreaking news. Full forensic identification has not been completed to confirm 100% that we found Gabby, but her family has been notified of this discovery. Authorities say law enforcement agents have found a body and they believe it's Gabby. <laughs>